Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today I'm gonna to be doing some reorganization in our apartment and I'm gonna show you some of the things that we do in our small space to maximize space and get as much storage as possible in order to keep things kind of organized and tidy. But first, I'm gonna need a little fuel for this. All right, now that I'm caffeinated, we're ready to go. I do have to disclaim, I'm not a naturally tidy, orderly person. If you are looking for a video where someone shows you how to color coordinate your cereal, this is not that video. For me, if my stuff is behind a door, in a drawer, out of sight, that is good with me. However, in a small space, you have to be a little bit more strategic with where you put things. So I do have to get a little bit more micro organized than my natural self would like to be, but I still try to do it in a way that I can still kind of throw things in their bin, in their pocket, in their you know little section of the drawer so that I'm not having to like put everything back precisely where it goes because honestly, it's not gonna happen. Okay, I am in my little hallway of closets now because the first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is over the door shoe organizers. These things are amazing for adding extra storage in a small space. I have them on both of my closet doors here with a bunch of miscellaneous things. I do need to reorganize them, so let's get right to that. Our organizer is empty and we have a lot of random stuff over here that I need to go through and recategorize. I think the easiest way to do this is just to spread out and kind of put things in big categories as you go and kind of narrow it down from there, throw away stuff you don't need, you know, figure out your donation pile, all that kind of stuff, depending on what kind of stuff you're organizing. And then you can put it all back where it belongs. It has to get worse before it gets better. Okay, so I kind of grouped everything into categories. So I kind of bunched like items together. We've got like those dongles. Is that what they're called? Are they really called dongles? Or is my husband just like totally making fun of me by making me call these dongles? Anyway, there are those things. And then like chargers, headphone stuff, uh, hard drive stuff. I do have my label maker, so I'm gonna make labels for the thing over there to actually have it labeled and accurately. So now I'm just gonna kind of organize this stuff together and decide what order I want everything on my actual shoe thing. And then I'll make the labels for the shoe thing because all these are like not accurate anymore because I don't actually need four things for batteries when all the batteries that I have are right here. Here is our after, so much more organized. Anytime you're organizing, it's really nice if you can leave a little bit of space for any new things that come into your house. That way you don't have to completely reorganize everything. When you bring something new in, you can just put it in one of the empty slots. 
All right, now we're on to our next thing, which is clothing. Now, I know I told you that I'm not like super picky about organization. However, I am picky about my clothes. I don't know if it's because I'm like into fashion and I like my clothes, or if it's because I have a background in fashion merchandising that used to be what I did for a career. So I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg, but I am so picky about my clothes and I have a few things that I do to help me stay organized and keep everything contained in a small space. First, let's talk about my closet. Now, I don't really need to do any reorganization here because I have it pretty well organized, but I have it all color coded and kind of categorized. So that's how I like to do it. I just think it's easiest to find things when I can find it by color and category. And I just think it looks nice. And I also did the same thing with my husband's wardrobe because I'm just picky about it. And if my side is gonna look nice and color coordinated, I think his should too. Next up, let's talk about our drawer organization. This is what I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into today because I have some laundry to fold. I'm gonna show you how I fold things. I use the Marie Kondo method where everything is lined up kind of like upright, like in a file system. It makes everything so easy to see. I can easily pick and grab something without messing up anything. I'm not having to dig through piles of clothes. I can just pick something out and everything else stays folded nicely and I don't mess anything up and I think it just looks nicer, it's easier to see what you have and it's easier to keep everything maintained if you fold it this way in the first place. Okay, I just finished washing some laundry so I went and grabbed a few pieces out of my laundry so I can show you this Marie Kondo folding method in, on a few different types of clothing. Now, if you're already a Marie Kondo folding expert, I will have chapters in this video so you can skip on to the next tip because all this is gonna be is showing you how to fold. Now, if you've never done this before, or if you need a little refresher, this is for you. Let me back up here so you can see me. Now, I've got a pair of leggings here. We're gonna start with something easy. What I do with these is fold them in half, and then I fold them in half lengthwise, like so. And then I'm not like crazy picky about it. You can be as picky as you wanna be, but then you just fold this into thirds and then if you do it just right you should be able to sit your clothes up and they stay so that's how you put it in your drawer upright is it actually wants to stay upright so let me show you on a pair of shorts now these are like really thin i guess they're cotton but it's like almost a linen feel little pair of um, like pajama shorts. So these probably won't stand up as well like in that little test that I just showed you, but they will stand up when they're squished in a drawer. So I just fold them in half again and then fold that into thirds. And then there you have it. These probably won't stand up. Well, maybe they will. So there we are. Now this will go in my pajama drawer perfectly. Next up, let's do a t-shirt. This is one of my husband's t-shirts, so it's a bigger one. Um, but the, the method works exactly the same, whether it's a, like a larger shirt or even like a kid's shirt, you do it exactly the same. It's just gonna like vary on how wide it is, depending on how big the item of clothing is. But if you have all of the same person's clothes in a drawer, that same person who's all the same size, their clothes are probably gonna be about like lined up if that makes any sense. So first of all, with a t-shirt, I fold it in half, like so. So if you can see, this is like the middle of the t-shirt, this is the bottom where the neck, or the top where the neck is. And then I take the ends, hopefully this is making sense. So there's the neck on this side here, and I'm just folding that end over, kind of right where the neck begins. And so I just have a straight line there. And then I do the exact same thing on the other side. I fold it over. And then usually with something with a bigger sleeve, you're gonna have a little bit of that sleeve pop over on the other side right here. So I just fold that back over itself like so. Hopefully that, yeah. So then we have the front and the back and then I just take the part with the neck and I fold that over and fold that over and there you have it. I'm gonna do that again because I didn't do a very good job. So again, I'll show you, oops. We've got our shirt here and then we just fold it into thirds over 
and then over. Perfect. So now it sits up nicely in a drawer. And I do that with all of our pieces. I've got another pair of pants here that I can show you. Pants are definitely the easiest. So if you're just getting into this and you're struggling to get the hang of it, start with just doing it with your pants because they're super easy. So fold them in half with pants. You fold it in half again. And then you do the thirds to make it stand up. So you always end with folding it in thirds like so and then it will stand nicely in your drawer. So now let's do a long sleeve shirt. These are a little bit trickier, but it's still the same principle. So you hold it up. You guys are seeing the back of this shirt. This is the front. This is the back that you're seeing. And then I usually lay it out a little bit. Let me back up so you can see me. I like to take the sleeves first thing and just get them out of the way. So I just fold them in like so, and then you can do it exactly the same way I did that t-shirt. Now that the sleeves are out of the way, you take one end, fold it to the middle. I use the neck as kind of a guideline of how far in to fold it. I fold it basically until I get to the neck. I don't fold the neck over. And then again on the other side, kind of straighten it out. And then I start with the neck because I like the neck to be on the inside because then I find that if there's any graphics on the t-shirt, you can actually see it from the drawer so you can see what your shirt looks like. It also just keeps it a little bit cleaner because this like messy neck is not out. So, oh, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fold it in half first. Sorry, I'm telling you guys wrong. And then fold it over. Sometimes you fold it into thirds. Sometimes you fold it in half. It kind of just depends on the length of the garment. But here, what I did is I actually folded it in half and folded it in half again. So I know I showed that a little bit differently this time but it kind of just depends on the height of the garment. And then I'm gonna show you a pair of athletic shorts. Again, these are my husband's, so they're a little bit bigger. I fold them in half, and then I take like this crotch area, I guess, and kind of fold that in. Kind of the same thing as the long sleeve, you just need to get it out of the way. I fold it in a little bit, and then I do the thirds, or sometimes the fourth, I think I might do fourths with this particular pair of shorts, and boom. There you have it, the Marie Kondo method. We're back in my closet for my next organization tip and that is to use your wall space. So if you don't have a lot of space horizontally, if you're in a small space, go up. Look for ways that you can use the wall space as storage instead of just the ground around you and furniture that you can put on the ground. So I have used command hooks in our closet to take what is otherwise a really small space and give it some extra storage. So as you can see, this is a very small space between my doorway and where my clothes start, but I've used command hooks to get storage for belts, necklaces, and hats all in this area that would otherwise be just wasted space. And I did the same thing on my husband's side that is even smaller. I have hats and belts on this side squeezed in there and honestly, it works perfectly. Another way to keep things organized is by using drawer dividers or drawer separators. I think they are so, so helpful in keeping things kind of categorized and neat looking. I use them in our desk drawers here and they just keep everything so neat and tidy. I'm a big believer in macro categories. So as you can see, I don't have anything color coated. I don't have my wood pencils separate from my mechanical pencils or anything crazy like that. I have macro categories because then I can just use any pen and throw it back in the pen section and it's organized. I can use any marker, highlighter, and I can throw it back in there and it is organized. And for me, that's so much more sustainable than trying to like color code all my highlighters because I know myself and I know that when I'm done using a highlighter, I just want to throw it back in the drawer. I'm not going to reorganize everything every single time to keep it in color order or whatever. I also have drawer dividers in my bathroom, but as you can see, this needs a little bit of TLC. So let's get organizing. All right, so there it is, the finished product. I have some eye things like eye drops and lashes. I also just needed a place to put this vitamin E oil, so there it is. 
I have my cotton balls here. I do have more cotton balls uh, under my sink. So if I need backups, I'll just fill that up from there. This is all like oral health, obviously, some chapstick, dental floss, that kind of thing. And then this is pretty much my entire makeup collection, you guys. I am pretty minimalist when it comes to makeup. I do have one more eyeshadow palette in another drawer and some lip products in a different drawer. But other than that, this is everything I have makeup wise. I am definitely a minimalist when it comes to makeup. I only repurchase things when I'm actually out of the product. And I just like it that way. As you can tell, I do very like basic minimal makeup. So I don't need a ton of extra products if I'm not really gonna use them anyway. Okay, it's the next day. I ran out of time to film the rest of this video yesterday, so here we are, new outfit. This next tip is a bit of a do as I say, not as I do <laughs> kind of thing because I have not been very good about this, but that is to try to get furniture that has storage built in. I tend to like very minimal furniture. That's kind of the aesthetic I like in my home. However, in a small space, you need all the storage you can get. So I wish I had gotten some pieces of furniture that have storage in them. And I'm trying to do a better job of doing that with any future furniture pur purchases. I do have a couple things that I'm gonna show you just as examples. The first thing is this uh chest right here i'm in the middle of spray painting it so it looks a little bit crazy if you guys remember or if you've been on my channel before this used to be a really dark wood and i'm in the process of spray painting it to match this piece of furniture so right now it's got just like the base uh primer on so it's stark white but i'm gonna do like an off-white like this and it'll match this and my off-white pillows and stuff like that but I love this because it has a ton of storage. We store like quilts and some big pieces of decor and like random little things that we don't really ever need to access, but they're in there out of the way. Another thing you can do is get decor that has a little bit of storage. So I recently bought these. Once again, I'm in the process of repainting them. So they're all white. This looks very like weirdly monochrome, but anyway, um, I need your help. What color do you guys think I should paint them? I'm, I put a poll on Instagram the other day and it seemed like most of you on Instagram were kind of torn between black and gray. So I'm curious what you guys think. Should I do them black or gray? And should I do like a matte finish or should I do a glossy finish? So comment down below and let me know what you think on that front. But I love these because not only do they kind of have like a cool, kind of urban vintage feel, but they also have storage. So inside, I didn't spray paint the inside obviously, but there's like a ton of space to store things. So that's another idea if you are low on storage is get some kind of decor that can double as storage. And that doesn't have to be old toolboxes if that's not your thing. That could be baskets, that could be little boxes that you sit on a side table. Anything like that can be great storage and just get some things out of sight so that your house looks a little bit more tidy. So there you have it guys, my organizational tips for living in a small space and staying organized even if you're not the most organized person you. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button down below. Click subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified every time I make a new video. I have new videos every Monday and Friday all around home, make home making and healthy living and I would love to have you guys around. I'll see you later. Bye.